Ladies and gentlemen, honored guests, my name is David Iwasa, e. and I am honored to be your moderator and to welcome you to this, this year's Remembrance Day ceremony at the Japanese Canadian War Memorial. Iwasa Davido to Moshimas. Kotoshi wa shikiten no shikayaku o sasete itadakimas. Mira sama, mata hikiaku no mira sama. Kotoshi no Nikke Kanada Jin, Senbotsha, Suito Kai, Shikiten no Gosanka, Kokoro Yori, Kansha Itashimas. I am pleased to acknowledge that we are on the traditional territories of three local First Nations the Musqueam, Squamish, and Slay Watu people. Otakstachiwa Musqueam, Squamish, to Slay Watu Shizoku no Dento Chiki. Ni kono shikiten o konatte iru koto o minasama ni nishiki shite itadakitai to omoimasu. And now we'll have a taiko duet by John Endo Greenway, Greenaway and Emiko Newman.
Thank you, John and Emmy Cole. This year is the 102nd anniversary of the end of the First World War, the 75th anniversary of the end of the Second World War, and the 70th anniversary of the start of the Korean conflict, and the 6th anniversary of the end of Canada's combat mission in Afghanistan. Canadians of Japanese ancestry have served honorably and with distinction in all of these conflicts. However, today, we also commemorate the 100th anniversary of the Japanese-Canadian War Memorial, before which we are at this moment. Dedicated on April 9, 1920, this memorial has stood for 100 years, honoring the sacrifice of those who lost their lives in the First World War, and subsequently, all those who gave their lives for Canada in all of its wars since then. It also stands as a symbol of the hopes of those who served and sacrificed, so that Canadians of Japanese ancestry might receive all the rights and privileges available to full citizens of this great country. I'd like to present our honored guests at this time, but I will only uh, note those national and municipal representatives who are not addressing us later in this program. Representing the City of Vancouver, Deputy Mayor Lisa Dominato, the Vancouver Police Department and Mounted Squad, Superintendent Michelle Davey, I would also ask that you note the presence of the Vancouver Police Department Mounted Squad, who are watching over us at this time. The Vancouver Board of Parks and Recreation, Commissioner Stuart McKinnon. The National Association of Japanese Canadians, President Laureen Oikawa. And the Consul General of Japan, Consul General Takashi Hattori. I will now ask Keiko Norisue to lead us in the singing of O Canada. I now ask the Reverend Im of the Vancouver Japanese United Church for his reflections and prayer. Reverend Im. I'm going to using the, the on separate paper prayer together. It is my privilege to welcome all of you to this special service of remembrance. It is Remembrance Day once again, and we will, as a nation, acknowledge the sacrifice of the people of the armed forces throughout history. 
However, as a community of Japanese Canadians today, we will be taking some time to reflect on the sacrifice of Japanese Canadians throughout the ages. Members of Japanese Canadian veterans have served in every major conflict since Japanese Canadian immigrants and still do today. And so it is appropriate for us to affirm their lives lost in war and bring them to mind here with us as we do this ceremony in freedom and peace. I would like to invite you to pray together here. On this Remembrance Day, we gather to pray. On this day, when the guns once fell silent. On this day of hope. In this time of story, song, and prayer, help us to catch a vision of how the world could live together. The Holy One, grant that we who gather here today may pay fitting tribute and honor to the memory of those who have died and served in the service of their country. May we be so inspired by the spirit of their love and courage that, forgetting all selfish and unworthy motives, may we who desire peace be willing to work for justice. The Holy One, we thank you for bringing us together this Remembrance Day to recall with tenderness and respect those who lost their lives and served from Japanese Canadian community and the many thousand lives of field in the wars of the last century. We pray for all those still caught up in conflict across the world and acknowledge what may be one, our one confusion about war and how we might participate in creating an enduring peace. Help us to meet with Holy One in this moment of ceremony. Make us ever mindful of your goodness toward us and strengthen us to be aware of the need of others. As we pray for peace, May it start with peace in our hearts. Almighty and Eternal One, from whose love in you we cannot be parted, either by death or life. Hear our prayers for all this day and help us to live in love and serve. Amen. Today we remember the veterans here are the memories we spent with them. Also, they and we are always connected. They not only served for their family and this country, but also peace of the world. They will inspire for generations. Through their lives, we truly appreciate our life and make it count, appreciate the small and simple things. Be kind and help others. Let we love always we love. And when things get hard first there, it's a bigger plan and that we will be stronger. Even if we are separated from each other, the memories and the feelings we have spent with them are forever connected. Bless the family and this con community and this country and this world. Thank you. Word of Remembrance. Remember the souls who died for the world and were cared for the peace of the world. We will remember them. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Holy One, and may perpetual light shine upon them. 
May the soul of the righteous, through your great mercy, rest in peace. Amen. Having gathered, remembered, heard, given, and prayed, we ask Holy One for your blessing and for your continual presence in our lives. Remind us that no matter where we go, you are there. No matter how great the world becomes, all it takes is one ray of light for a new day to be upon us once again. Together with the fact that we are recognizing and remembering the 100th anniversary of the dedication of this war memorial. We're also remembering the efforts and sacrifices that were made by individuals from our community to ensure that they had the right and the privileges of other Canadians, and that is the right to vote. When the young men who served in the First World War and subsequently those that served in the Second World War, went out on behalf of Canada, they did not have the right to vote and to serve in many other ways within the province of British Columbia. And one of their, one of the reasons why they went out to serve, and many of them gave their lives, was they felt that it would help in terms of the efforts of the community to obtain the franchise and the right to those privileges that are available to all other Canadians. And it's thanks to their sacrifices and their efforts that today we are able to benefit and to exercise those rights and privileges that had been denied to them. And we will have an opportunity to hear from the descendants of a number of prominent individuals from within the community that struggled so hard so that we might have the right to vote here in British Columbia. And we'll hear from them later in this program. With this, we now prepare ourselves for the last post. Uh, following the last post, when we reach uh, 11 a.m., we will have two minutes of silence. If you recall that on the 11th day, in the 11th hour, in 1918, the First World War, or at that time, they thought was the war to end all wars, came to an end. Unfortunately, that was not the case. But nonetheless, we celebrate and remember that event on November 11th at this time. With this, I'd like to turn the time to Bugler Bombardier, Bombardier Jean-Vierre Schwartzberg, who will sound the last post.
Thank you. Piper Edward McElwain, McElwain, and Bugler Bombardier, Jean Vier Schwartzberg. We will now ask Eileen Kitamura to recite in Flanders Field. In Flanders Fields. In Flanders Fields, the poppies grow between the crosses, row on row, that mark our place. And in the sky, the lark still bravely singing, fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago, we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow. Loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you from failing hands we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. Thank you, Eileen. Now I'll call upon David Mitsui to recite the act of remembrance. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn them. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. Thank you, David. We will now view video greetings from the Honorable Dr. Hedy Fry, Member of Parliament for Vancouver Centre, the Honorable Joyce Murray, Member of Parliament for Vancouver Quadra, and Member of the Legis Legislative Assembly of British Columbia elect, the Honorable Anne Kang. We will now, if you will turn your attention to the video screen, and those that are on live stream, this will be coming straight through to your uh, stream. I am so sorry that I cannot be with you today in person to celebrate and remember Japanese Canadians, especially here in British Columbia. One will recall that many of the young Japanese fought in the, uh, Canadians fought in World War I, uh, performing bravely in places like the Somme, Vimy and Passchendaele. And then came the Second World War and suddenly Japanese Canadians who had lived and owned land and had businesses and become university graduates were then interned uh, because they were deemed to be enemy aliens. And yet some young Japanese Canadians went out there and fought valiantly for a country that rejected them and treated them as enemy aliens. I think we need to recall this as we celebrate what Japanese Canadians have done. We need to recall the bravery and the courage, and we need to remember that it was not until 1948 that they actually were able to vote. And it was not until 1949 that Japanese Canadians were released from the War Measures Act. So as we remember the history of Japanese Canadians, let us remember that they remain loyal and true to this country during all of that time, lest we forget. As we mark Remembrance Day, I'm humbled to stand and honor the service and sacrifice of Canada's veterans here at the Japanese Canadian Veterans Memorial on behalf of the Parliament of Canada. 
Today, all Canadians pause and reflect. Together, we stand in stillness on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month, and we remember. We remember the great war that ended 101 years ago. We remember our troops who served in Afghanistan and Korea. We remembered the bravery and sacrifice of Canadian soldiers in the Second World War that ended 75 years ago, and the many soldiers deployed into danger in the decades since. We remember what they fought for. We live in a proudly diverse country thanks to those who fought selflessly to achieve peace. Canada's diverse population of veterans has served in many military efforts, both on Canadian soil and abroad. We remember the countless women essential to Canadian wartime efforts, whether serving in the military or filling labour shortages or leading on the home front. We remember and honour the service of Indigenous veterans who served during the Second World War and who continue to proudly serve in uniform today. We remember the hundreds of Japanese Canadian soldiers who served our country in World War II and many more in the decades since. Japanese Canadians for a long time were not treated as equal Canadians. It's a shameful, the shameful displacement and internment of over 22,000 Japanese Canadians, most of them right here in BC, is a part of Canada's history not to be forgotten. Canadians have fought, were injured, or died to make Canada the diverse and tolerant country it is today. We must uphold the values that they stand for, carry on their legacy, and always seek to improve it. Today, we honour our veterans' sacrifice by remembering the victims of war. Their stories are our family's stories. Their pain is our pain. We will forever continue to tell and retell their stories, and through this, we renew our commitment to peace, lest we forget. Good morning, everyone, respected veterans, dignitaries, and friends. My name is Anne Kang, MLA-elect for Burnaby Deer Lake. I'm honored to take part in this year's 100th anniversary of the Japanese-Canadian Cenotaph Remembrance Day Ceremony. Japanese Canadian soldiers represented Canada to fight in World War I and they paved the way for all Canadians towards their rights to peace and freedom despite experiencing racial injustice. We're indebted to the Japanese Canadian soldiers and veterans and we gather here today to remember those who fought, volunteered, served and sacrificed their lives for our country's freedom. In this time of pandemic, we continue to pay our respect this year virtually to our fallen soldiers, our veterans, and all people who made sacrifices to bring peace to our country. We thank you and we salute your serving in our nation's defense, lest we forget. Thank you. I would now ask David Mitsui for his address, followed by Susan Yatabe via video and Kathy Enros. I should point out that all three are descendants of those who played key roles in Japanese Canadians obtaining the right to vote eventually in 1949. But the process before that was long. And I turn the time over to, first of all, David Mitsui. Veterans and families, honored guests, it's my pleasure and honor to speak to you on this day of remembrance. 100 years ago, the Japanese Canadian War Memorial was unveiled and dedicated to the 222 Japanese Canadian veterans of World War I who answered the call of duty during the Great War. On this day of remembrance, in the presence of both physical and virtual uh, veterans, families, and friends. We are proud of these brave men 
and we remember and honor their legacy of sacrifice for our freedom. Their compelling story is one of honor, loyalty, and resilience. My grandfather, Masumi Mitsui, immigrated to Canada in 1908. The son of a Japanese naval officer and of samurai heritage, he was committed to creating a new life for himself in Canada. However, the Japanese immigrant soon discovered that life in British Columbia was fraught with systemic racism and overt discrimination towards all Asians. They thought the only way to change that narrative was to have the full rights of Canadian citizenship, to have the right to vote. Their initial efforts to lobby the provincial government for the right to vote were to no avail. And then in 1914, Britain declared war on Germany, thereby committing all British Commonwealth countries to send troops. This became a rallying point for the Japanese Canadian immigrants in Vancouver who felt that if they volunteered to fight for Canada, it would prove their loyalty and the government would have to give them the franchise. However, in spite of creating their own Japanese Canadian Corps and funding and training themselves for enlistment, the governments of British Columbia and Canada created racist and discriminatory policies and legislation preventing the Japanese Canadians from enlisting. As a community, they felt defeated, disheartened, and further disenfranchised. But in early 1916, due to high casualty rates overseas, Britain was demanding more soldiers. Then word came the Japanese Canadian men were being accepted for enlistment as individuals in Alberta. Masumi Mitsui enlisted on September 1st, 1916, and on March 5th, 1917, proceeded to France for active duty with the Calgary Highlanders 10th Battalion, 2nd Infantry, or 2nd Brigade, Infantry Brigade, 1st Canadian Division. Japanese Canadian soldiers were interspersed amongst several battalions of the Canadian Expeditionary Forces. They had to endure racist attitudes with the within the military, but they soon proved their worth during battle, and both fellow soldiers and officers lauded their bravery. In early 1917, the Allies were losing the battle against the Germans in spite of the win at Vimy Ridge in April. Following his success at Vimy, Lieutenant Governor Arthur Currie developed the plans for the Battle of Hill 70 in August. It was during this significant battle that six Canadians earned a Victoria Cross medals and my grandfather was awarded the Military Medal of Bravery for conspicuous bravery and distinguished conduct in action on August 16, 1917. Upon discharge in early 1919, Masumi Mitsui had earned the rank of sergeant for his leadership on the battlefield. My dad told me one story about my grandfather's experience during the war. As he led his men from village to village, he would search for alcohol such as wine or brandy and fill his canteen. He would give his men a drink from his canteen as motivation to get to the next trench, reward for a hard fight, or to disinfect wounds. At the end of the war, the Japanese Canadian community celebrated the return of their soldiers and mourned the loss of the 54 fallen heroes. Through fundraising, the Japanese Canadian War Memorial was dedicated on April 9, 1920 to commemorate those brave soldiers of World War I. But that is not the end of the story. The fight for the franchise continued and my grandfather was part of the social activist group in Vancouver who led the charge. In 1925, the Japanese Canadian veterans created the, the Canadian Legion Local Branch No. 9 of the British Empire Service League in order to gain the support of other veterans. Masumi Mitsui was its first president. After many years of lobbying and advocacy, a contingent of Japanese Canadian veterans and businessmen traveled to Victoria in 1931 to lobby the British Columbia for all Japanese Canadians for the right to vote. This intention included Masumi Mitsui, Sainosake Kubota, Saburo 
Chinobu, Nabuo Murakami, Rizuko Hoita, Nobuhei Watanabe, and Legion Provincial Secretary Robert McNichol. Their efforts only partially succeeded, succeeded as the Japanese Canadians, veterans of World War I, run the right to vote, and it was not until 1949 that the rest of the J persons of Japanese ancestry got the right to vote in Canada. Immediately after the decision, the contingent returned to Vancouver and made the announcement of this partial victory at the Japanese-Canadian War Memorial in honor of their fallen heroes. In 2011, this event was recognized by the National Historic Sites and Monuments Board of Canada, the Japanese-Canadian veterans of World War I being the given the right to vote in 1931 was declared an event of national historic significance because it was the first time that persons of Asian ancestry were given the right to vote in British Columbia. But again, that is not the end of the story. After the Japanese military attacked Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941, the Canadian government treated the 21,000 Japanese Canadians living on the west coast of British Columbia as enemy aliens. They were forcibly uprooted from their homes, had their property dispossessed, were incarcerated in internment camps between 1942 and 1946, and then dispersed across Canada. All due to systemic racism by the municipal, provincial, and federal governments. Masumi and Suki Mitsui and their four children had their 17-acre poultry farm in Port Coquitlam dispossessed. They were incarcerated in Greenwood internment camp and in 1946 were forcibly dispersed to finally settle in Hamilton, Ontario. As a result of these experiences, my grandfather refused to attend a public Remembrance Day service. He had great respect for the military, but he had disdain towards the government for the treatment afforded his family and the Japanese Canadian community during and after World War II. As I was growing up, I recall that every Remembrance Day, my grandfather would put on his military uniform, shine his World War I medals, don his Legion beret, and have a silent tribute to his fallen comrades in the privacy of his home. In 1983, my grandfather was persuaded to attend a public service Remembrance Day after World, after World War II, his first, when a Hamilton Spectator journalist discovered his presence. Subsequently, on August 2, 1985, at the age of 98 years, accompanied by his daughters Amy Kuwabara and Lucy Ishii, he attended the rededication of this cenotaph, the Japanese-Canadian War Memorial, and relit the lantern at the top. In doing so, he stood, saluted, and said, I've done my last duty to my comrades. They are gone, but not forgotten. And now the final chapter. Masumi Mitsui died April 22, 1987 in his hundredth year. He never received an apology from the government or financial compensation for his dispossessed poultry farm. As the official public apology and redress from the federal government came the following year on September 2, 1987. 88. Masumi Matsui's legacy of, to the Japanese Canadian community is being a leader, a decorated war veteran, and a social activist. They never gave up on the dream of those 222 brave Issei who volunteered during the Great War in the hope of receiving Canadian citizenship and the right to vote for all Japanese Canadians. The Japanese Canadian War Memorial in its hundredth year continues to symbolize the Japanese Canadian veterans fight for equality, for justice, and for human rights during the Great War, World War II, the Korean War, and the war in Afghanistan. These men are our Japanese Canadian heroes. Their names are forever immortalized on this cenotaph. The Japanese Canadian War Memorial will continue to honor these heroic Issei who dream the dream and with undeniable courage, perseverance, and resilience impacted the lives of future generations 
of Japanese Canadians. In the immortal words of my grandfather, they are gone, but not forgotten. Lest we forget. Arigato. Thank you. Because his grandmother had been interned at Caslow, my son Ewan wrote a high school essay on the Japanese-Canadian in internment. We borrowed Kenadachi's book, The Enemy That Never Was, from the library, and it fell open to a page that read, Saburo Shinobu, who led the fight for the franchise, declared, I cannot help thinking of the future of the Japanese-Canadians as a whole. While I write this letter, thoughts of the morrow come, and why, I do not know, but the tears spring unbidden. Saburo Shinobu was my mother's father. We told my mother, we didn't realize that your dad got the franchise for World War I Japanese-Canadian soldiers or that he could foretell the future. How correct he was in 1931 to worry about his community's future. My late mother often spoke of her father, who died before my birth, as a wise and educated Renaissance man who could have been a diplomat. Because of his work and his command of English, he was acquainted with many people throughout BC. He is our undisputed family rock star. He mingled with royalty, received many awards and honors, was greeted as a hero in France, and was interned for three and a half years by his own country, Canada. Grandpa, Saburo Shinobu, was born in Miyagi Ken, Japan. He arrived in Canada in 1907 with no inkling of how two world wars would shape his life. He planned to study medicine, but instead became an interpreter with the Canadian Japanese Association and later an insurance underwriter in Vancouver. His work for the association supported and rehabilitated Nikkei soldiers returning to Canada from World War I in Europe, where they had fought as members of the Canadian Expeditionary Force. He had recruited some of these soldiers and felt deeply responsible for their welfare. He began a campaign in BC to obtain the franchise for the returning veterans. He was heavily involved in fundraising for the Japanese Canadian War Memorial and gave a speech in English at its unveiling in Stanley Park on April 9th, 1920. Our family has a well-worn picture of Grandpa giving this speech in front of a crowd at the War Memorial. Vancouver Branch Number no. 9 of the Legion was established by veterans Masumi Mitsui and Sainosuke Kubota, Kubota and Grandpa Shinobu, a civilian, in 1927. This is my only photo showing all three together. Dave Mitsui and Kathy Enros, grandchildren of Masumi and Sainosuke, are at the War Memorial today. All three of us are honored to take part in the anniversary on behalf of our families. Eleven years later, Mitsui Kubota, Shinobu, and veteran Noboru Murakami went to the BC Legislature to seek the franchise for the veterans. They met with every member of the Legislature to promote their cause and they were supported by those who were veterans. Imagine how difficult this was for four immigrants whose first language was not English. Grandpa's account of this day reads like a thriller with raised hopes, tears of disappointment, and many abrupt, unsettling developments. The franchise was earned by a single vote, breaking a deadlock, making Nikkei veterans the first Asians allowed to vote in Canada. Although veterans gained the provincial and federal franchise on that day in 1931, their descend descendants did not. Grandfather and his friends wept with relief and exhaustion at the good news. They had struggled for 12 years to reach that goal. My uncle, now 100, remembers shouting, Hooray! We won! and jumping in excitement during the phone call from his dad. Receiving a hero's welcome when they returned from Victoria, the four men drove directly to the war memorial to honour their fallen colleagues. They were single-minded in their quest to honour the veterans' sacrifices with the franchise. We are proud that they succeeded. A major event at Grandpa's life was to represent Legion Branch No. 9 at the 1936 unveiling of the Vimy Memorial in France. It was a reward from the Legion for his work in obtaining the vote for veterans in 1931 and fishing rights in 1930 for Nikkei veterans equal to those of other veterans. Grandpa, World War I veteran Bunshiro Furukawa and businessman 
Eikichi Kagetsu were the three Japanese Canadian delegates among 6,000 Canadian Vimy pilgrims. Grandpa's Vimy pilgrimage diary was translated into English and has been quoted by historians around the world. After enduring anti-Asian racism in BC for years, he was greeted as an equal on the passenger ship that sailed from Montreal to Belgium at the unveiling of the Vimy Memorial by King Edward VIII, at the garden party at Buckingham Palace where he met the Duke of Gloucester, the King's brother, and during veterans' marches in France in front of cheering crowds. The three Japanese Canadians visited the scattered French graves of as many Japanese Canadian soldiers as possible, despite not being able to speak French. Six years later, Grandpa and most Japanese Canadian World War I veterans were interned. Having the vote did not protect war veterans from internment. When there was an opportunity to improve life for fellow Nikkei, Grandpa was there to help. In Vancouver, he volunteered on the boards of the Japanese United Church, Asahi Baseball Park Association, and Alexander Street Japanese Language School. In Kaslo, he and Dr. Kozo Shimo Takahara founded the Japanese Canadian Property Protection Association. In Toronto, post internment, he volunteered with the Japanese Canadian Committee for Democracy, Japanese Canadian Citizens Association, and Japan Relief. He organized the visit of Crown Prince Akahito to Toronto in 1953. Grandpa died in 1956. Masumi Mitsui and Sainosuke Kubota attended his funeral, the final time the three friends were together. Grandpa was not a war veteran, but he was a fighter. This resolute and principled man fought most of his life for the rights of Nikkei in Canada, particularly the veterans represented by the memorial. He would be very proud of what Japanese Canadians have accomplished in the 64 years since his death. This well-known photo of the war memorial opening was taken during Grandpa's speech. At the centennial of the Japanese Canadian War Memorial, we, like Grandpa, must remember the soldiers who sacrificed so much for us. Thank you. My grandfather, Sanosuke Kubota, arrived in Canada in 1907, at the very young age of 17. He desired a better life than that of Hatsetsuma Samurai in Kagoshima. I cannot even imagine the courage it took to leave his home country alone with little money to arrive in a strange country not knowing what lied ahead. No job was too small for my grandfather. He worked for a while as a cook at a hotel on Main Island with many other Japanese landed immigrants. Despite being a naturalized citizen of Canada, like all Japanese, he had no right to vote. I'm told that this unfair treatment and discrimination really upset him. He strongly believed that if he enlisted, showing his dedication to his adopted country, that this would help all Japanese earn the right to vote. Unable to enlist in British Columbia, he used all of his savings and headed to Calgary in 1916 and was asked to recruit at least 100 more Japanese to increase the strength of his battalion. He headed back here to Vancouver and, and uh, went to the fishing canneries along the communities of the Skeena River and recruited more soldiers. In 1917, he fought at Vimy Ridge where he was also wounded and eventually honorably discharged in 1919. After the war, he joined others in forming their own branch of the Royal Canadian Legion. As a Legion secretary, he continued his fight for the rights of Japanese for the veterans to earn the right to vote and towards the path of equality and justice. In 1931, he was very proud to return to Vancouver from a visit to Victoria, victorious. The franchise was given the right to vote. This was a major step towards the equality for all Japanese in Canada. They were greeted by veterans and their families where they formed a procession of cars and held an impromptu ceremony right here in Stanley Park at this very monument. They celebrated this recognition, but also to remember those that lost their lives while fighting for freedom and for Canada. Despite a clear show of patriotism, my grandfather and family, along with all Japanese, were forcibly relocated to Slokan, where they were interned during the Second World War. 
After the war, they moved to Toronto, as there was still a great amount of discrimination towards Japanese here in Vancouver. This entire time, my grandfather kept the Japanese Canadian honor roll, photographs, and the Legion flag safe. My grandparents returned to Vancouver in 1977 to return this honor roll, photographs, and the flag to the Japanese language school on Alexander Street, where they are on display today. He wrote his final report as secretary in the Japanese newspaper, where he thanked Canadians for assembling each year on November 11th at this memorial to honor his comrades. He passed away a year later. This monument in Stanley Park has very, a lot of meaning to our family. It's a reminder of my grandparents' hopes and dreams when moving to Canada for a better life. It's a reminder of the discrimination and the inequality that our relatives faced from our country. It's a reminder of how hard my grandfather fought to ensure we all have a voice with the hope that we will never face such judgment and prejudice. It's a reminder of the lives that were lost fighting for our freedom. It's a reminder of how grateful we are for living in the Canada of today because of their tenacity, their beliefs that we are all accepted as Canadian no matter where we have come from. I feel honored to be standing in the very spot that my grandfather stood celebrating for all of us. Lest we forget their sacrifices, lest we strive to ensure a voice of equality for all in Canada. I would like to finish by reading the same poem read by my grandfather in 1931 as they celebrated the granting of the franchise and their right to vote. And I'm going to do it in both Japanese and English. Hitobito wa yu, kimitachi wa shindato, daga kimira wa sojanai, shizumeru tayu wa, kimira no tame ni no borudaro, nanji no takara. Nagasatera kiyoi wana. Kienyu daro, nando ka warera ni. Oshieta chuse wa. Shinanu daro. Although you are gone, you are not dead. Surely the sun, the setting sun, will rise again for you. Your heroic spirit will live in our hearts. We take the torch from your hand to fight and carry on. Thank you very much. Arigato. Thank you, David Mitsi, Susan Yatabe, and and Kathy Hendros. This memorial is also very special to me. I have a great uncle who served in the Canadian Army as part of the 222 that joined. He joined in Alberta. Seichi Kinoshita. I'm grateful to be the son uh, of Toru Iwasa, who served with the Royal Canadian Engineers in the Second World War and landed in Normandy and fought throughout that war. I'm also honored to be the, the father of my son, Kenneth Iwasa who is a medical doctor in the Canadian forces in Afghanistan. And so, while I never suffered any of the, the injustices or the discrimination that my great, great uncle or my father had experienced, I am the beneficiary of their sacrifices and my son was able to serve in the same Canadian forces as a medical doctor and as a full member and eventually a major in the Canadian forces. And so we are the beneficiaries of the sacrifices that have been made by all those who are commemorated here. With this we would like to begin the placing of the wreaths. I would ask that each of the representatives come forward and collect their wreath and place it appropriately on the base of the cenotaph uh, as, a, as in a continuous order. So I will be reading the names, but I would ask that you start 
proceed uh, immediately after you hear your name to go and to place the, the wreath here on the base of the cenotaph. So if we will begin, representing the British Empire Service League, Legion Number no. 9, David Mitsui, and a great-granddaughter, Megan Becker. S20 and the Nisei Veterans Association, Makoto Iwasa, great-grandson of a World War II veteran and the son of a veteran of the Afghanistan War. The National Association of Japanese Canadians, President, President Laureen Oikawa. The National Nikkei, Nikkei National Museum and Cultural Center, Executive Director Kara Goshinmon Foster. The Consul General of Japan, Consul General Takashi Hattori. The Greater Vancouver Japanese Canadian Citizens Association, President Judy Hanazawa. MP Dr. Hedy Fry's Vancouver Center Office, Constituency Pre Assistant Veronica Stolba. The Royal Canadian Mounted Police, Corporal Peter Somerville. The City of Vancouver, Deputy Mayor Lisa Dominato. The Vancouver Police Department and the Mounted Squad, Superintendent Michelle Davey. The Vancouver Board of Parks and Recreation, Commissioner Stuart McKinnon. The Vancouver Japanese Language School and Japanese Hall, Executive Director Darius Mays. The Japanese Community Volunteers Association, Tonari Gumi. Member of the Board of Directors, Patrick Lee. The British Columbia Jodo Shinshu Temples, Ted Akune. The Japanese Christian Churches, Reverend David Im. The Vancouver Konko Faith, Roderick Hashimoto. Seicho no Ie Church, Kusa S. Yamamoto. The Nav Chorus, Seo Midori, uh, Midori Seo. The National Society Daughters of the American Revolution, Nancy McLean. Oh, the Japanese Canadian War Memorial Committee, Linda Kalmota Reed. Also at the very end, Chris Yamamoto, uh, you have a poppy wreath that you will be printing up. Yes, and you you can place that at the front here, and any that would like to leave their their poppy pin in this in commemoration and memory uh, for your families. Please feel free to do so at the end. I would like to call upon Keiko Norise to lead us in singing God Save the Queen. Thank you, Keiko. 
And thank you to all those who attended our services today. We would like to thank all those who are watching through live stream all across this country. We appreciate having you with us and joining with us at this time and a very difficult time in the midst of this pandemic. And we are very pleased that we were able to have this service at this time. Thank you so much. I'd like to thank uh, Linda Kawamoto Reed, the Nikkei National Museum, uh, and all of those who participated in ensuring this event took place. If those of you who have a program uh, will notice uh, the special thanks to also to the Vancouver Japanese Language School, our many our volunteers uh, today, and the uh, and the amazing Dream Stream team of Adam P W Smith, Mark L'Esperance, and finally to the Vancouver Parks and Recreation Board for their cooperation in making this event a special one. We also want to recognize the Veterans Affairs Canada, L'Ancien Combattant Canada, for their uh, assistance uh, as well. The National Association of Japanese Canadians uh, for their assistance. Thank you so much, and if you would like to leave your pin here, uh, please do so. Thank you. Appreciate your being here with us.